All right, is that barbershop? Yeah. 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 Absolutely, we would all agree that's barbershop. And in fact, you could play that for somebody who is outside of our style, someone perhaps in the acapella world. In fact, probably even anyone in the musical world and ask them, what is that? And they say, that's barbershop, right? So with that in mind, is this barbershop? Uh, 
that chord right there says, we're home, but we're leaving. <laughs> That's what that chord says. Sing without you, and bass go out you. Baritones out you. Sing that, here we go. Without you. Now we're back to home, right? Our music, uh, it, it very simply starts at home, most often. Sometimes we might start at a home away from home, but we come to home pretty quickly, right? And then, and we almost always end up at home. If we don't end up back at home, back at that tonic chord, then the music doesn't feel done. We haven't finished our journey. When we start at home, then we travel away, and actually from home, we can go anywhere in the musical world. And then we, there's a, a path that we like to follow. And that path is laid out for us by specifically the barbershop seventh chord. Those barbershop seventh chords tell us where to go. It's like a roadmap through the music that leads back home. Right? And, and the rest of the musical world, I think we call it the circle of fifths. So most barbershop songs are rich in that kind of music, and it just so happens that music written between 1890 and 1930, almost all of it used circle of fifths. Right? All the stuff written in Tin Pan Alley era, all the ragtime era stuff, was really rich in circle of fifths. You know who else uses it? The Broadway stage. A lot of a lot of musicals are rich in that kind of harmony. Mel Brooks. We all think of Mel Brooks as a comedian. Mel Brooks has written a number of songs. He wrote all the music to the producers. He's written a, a bunch of music to Young Frankenstein. He writes circle of fists like like nobody's business. It's like he's from Tin Pan Alley. I mean, and that's just the way music, oftentimes in constant music, speaks to us. Um, but Billy Joel uses a lot of circle of fifths. Right? Even Uptown Funk has some circle of fifths. Right? So it, it's in there, and, and we, we accept other progressions, but, but those progressions are rich in a song like My Wild Irish Rose or Heart of My Heart. In fact, it's almost exclusively that kind of progression, and we call that barbershop progressions. So a dumb question here. Is the circle of fifths in the melody or in the chords? Right? That's a great question. It's actually in the chords. Right? right? So, so when you said Billy Joel used a lot, it's not in the melody, it's in the piano and stuff he writes around it. It's in the chords, but it's implied by the melody. Right. The melody implies the harmony, right? The, the melody kind of tells us where the harmony needs to go because uh, as the melody moves, the notes in a given measure are, are, are most often going to be in a chord, right? They'll be the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh of a chord. Sometimes other parts, sometimes the sixth of the chord, but almost always the melody will tell us Okay, this chord, this measure needs to be this chord. And then if it's a well-written melody, that, that will lead to a progression that will lead us back home. But this is these these rules for where chords move uh, are are not our rules. These are rules that have, have existed for hundreds and hundreds of years from music theory. Um, and you can find them really in, in any, you know, Google a music theory uh, in a website or music theory books. Uh, uh, MusicTheory.net is a great one. That, that kind of walks you through from very, very basic exercises to identifying chords. But yet, it, it's, it's implied by the melody, but it's not the melody itself, it's actually the chord progressions. And, and for barbershoppers, again, we, we kind of like to hear, we like to hear those progressions. We also like to hear a lot of that seventh chord. Because what that does is that generates the lock and ring that we hold dear. And the hallmark of the barbershop style is four part consonant lock and ring chords. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with me? Um, uh, good, so, so what, else, what else makes uh, Wild Irish Rose mm -hmm. barbershop? Well, there's, there's always the harmony part about the melody part. Yes, that's really important. Uh, that, that, that there is almost always, uh, in almost every chord, uh, there's a harmony part above the melody. The melody is on an inside voice. That, that makes us different from other forms of acapella. Typically in SATB or even other TTBB type arrangements, the melody is in the highest voice part. Now, does it mean that we can't have tenor melody as a, a featured part of our songs? Because really what makes for great music, not even great barbershop, but great music is unity and contrast in satisfying proportions. And as we listen for what makes that music great, what you'll find is there always will be satisfying proportions of unity and contrast. In our case, unity typically means 
everyone's singing all the same word sounds. Right? Contrast typically means something different. Right? Tenor melody or lead melody with, with, with uh, neutral syllables in the background or other embellishments. And as long as we come back to that, we can have tenor melody. Uh, eight measures is typically the point in time where we say if it goes on for longer than eight measures, we start to get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> right? And if it goes on for 16 measures, we start to go, the whole audience starts to go, this doesn't feel right. What's, what's wrong with you, right? And, and so when the audience starts to squirm, that's when we as the music judges have to, uh, you know, have to get up and talk. <laughs> we stand up and talk at that point and say, all right, well, let's, uh, what are we going to do with this? Question? Uh, yeah. Not the answer, but with mixed choruses, yep. where it's a little bit artificial to, to fit two women's voices into the, the four voice mix, um, is there any ability to sort of uh, relax that rule? Um, uh, so I, I, would, I would say, first of all, it probably depends on the woman. Uh, if, if, if you have a bunch of altos, right, or, or mezzo sopranos, they're going to fit really well into our style. And in fact, my, my wife sings women's bass, and she has trouble singing vocal spectrum lead. Hmm. Right? So there, there are a lot of, of, of arrangements that we hear nowadays where the, the, the voice parts, the, the male voice parts, the top three parts in particular, are really written into the tenor range and, and the alto, and even in some cases, soprano range, right, for Tim Warwick. Um, uh, but what ends up happening is what we're hearing is more arrangements that have the higher three voice parts and a lower bass. And that, that kind of stuff will work pretty well. But, the, but to answer your question about relaxing the rule, no. <laughs> uh, I think it's correct that barbershop, a fundamental concept of the hallmark of the barbershop style used to be that it was singable by the average man in the street. Whereas a lot of the champs now, they are absolutely not singable by the man in the street. That's a really great point, Richard. Um, uh, that used to be part of the definition of the style. Uh, it no longer is. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, in, in some cases, I think if you look at uh, the, the, the crowd of people singing barbershop around, across the world over the last 20 years, um, the, the, we're, we're, see, we're seeing an influx of youth, right? And, and we're seeing an influx of, of people that have been singing uh, you know, other styles of music that are coming through educational systems where, they, where they're trained in, in choral singing. So I think in general, we're seeing singers that have a broader range. We're seeing a, a more youthful singer. In fact, for I think four or five years in a row, the number one recruited age in the Barber, Barbershop Harmony Society was 19. Wow. 19, of, of, of every age yeah. of, of members that joined, 19 was the, was the highest recruited age. So from that perspective, uh, I, and I think a lot of the champs over the last 10 or 15 years have shown us that you can sing songs uh, that perhaps the average chorus singer is not going to be able to achieve in a quartet and pull it off. And we've also seen advancements in choruses where a, a, an average chorus can sing some of those songs as long as we realize that not everyone needs to sing every note. And when you hear the great choruses, they're not given their all. They're given their best. Mm -hmm. And if there are notes that are out of, it's out of someone's range, you're not singing those notes. So, so you, that's a great point, and that is no longer part of, the, part of the style. Really what it boils down to is four things. Four things make a barbershop. Acapella, four part, melody, inside voice, and unity and contrast. And really, a, 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 we are characterized by what has been called homophony. If you start to read the category description and, and the, the judging manuals uh, in the next couple months, you're gonna see a term called homorhythmic. The, the actual correct term for what we've called homophonic for years is homorhythmic. Homorhythmic means everyone singing the same word sounds at the same time. So, Homorhythmic delivery, which is different from a lot of other a cappella forms, mm -hmm. and four part a cappella melody and an inside voice. Does that make sense? Yeah, the, the legato concept though, because you, could you do all that and sing, and sing staccato? 
Uh, you you could, but that wouldn't be barbershop, would it? Or would it? Well, it's still in the barbershops. It, it, it's it, the the song is in the barbershop style. The delivery probably isn't consistent. You wouldn't get over it. You wouldn't get consonants and love and ring. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. It's a good point. And, and that really comes down to as performed. How do we perform it? And you're right. If we if we just say to power, you have you have lock and ring. They would just they just be <laughs> short amount. <laughs> short amount. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, in your fourth part, the definition I didn't hear was seven chord or circle of fifths. Ah. Did I miss or, or, or Yeah. No. You. you, you, you yeah. I, I, we certainly like to hear a lot of those constant chords. We certainly like to hear the, and lock and ring is the hallmark of the style. And, and lock and ring is dependent upon uh, a predominance of, of consonant chords, including the, the seventh chord, and uh, that circle of fifths. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you won't hear a contestable barbershop arrangement uh, that doesn't have at least a, a prominently featured secondary dominant chord that circles back around to home. Mm -hmm. Like, heart of my heart, I love, there it is, you, life would be not without you. That shows up in every barbershop song. But there used to be a rule that said you have to have at least 33% barbershop seconds. <laughs> right? yeah. That's gone. It, it, the, 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 we, we actually call it uh, does it quack. Right? Have you heard, heard the expression? Yeah. If, it, if it looks like a duck oh, yeah. right. and it waddles like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's so much right there. So, same thing with barbershop. You don't have to. You don't have to know what a secondary dominant is. But our ear tells us, right? Our ear tells us, boy, that kind of looks like a barbershop quartet, and it sounds. They're they're singing all the same word sounds, and the melody is an inside voice, and the chords sure sound like barbershop. I guess it's a barbershop song, and we have relaxed those rules quite a bit. Yes. Um, I'm not very musical, but is is there a reason why like I sing tenor? I sing thirds most of the time, and like basses seem to sing like the root of the. What a great, great question! Great question. Um, yes, there is. There is a reason. Uh, let's let's sing. Heart of my heart, just the first chord. Here we go. Oh. Right? So when the bass is on the third or on the seventh, the 
chord, it doesn't set up the harmonic stack to sound like barbershop. Now, it happens all the time. If you've ever sung a David Harrington arrangement, you basis of some thirds and sevenths because they're littered throughout his charts. They're there for color. They're there to create a sense of, of, of tension that then resolves. Right, but, but those chords, typically, we like to have the basses on the strong parts of the chord, which creates the lock and sets up an overtone stack that brings them up. Yeah. Another question? There was a, yes? So what defines a contestable barbershop song? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. So let's, so let's, let's actually talk about that. Um, um, there are, um, so first of all, you can compete with anything you'd like. As long as you're willing to accept the score, <laughs> as long as it as long as it doesn't break, as long as it doesn't break the rule. So there's only a few things that will get you a zero. Other things will just get you a very low score. It can actually get you uh, one is the new zero. Uh, it, 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 you could, for example, you could go out and sing tenor melody, and as long as you didn't bring instrumentation on stage, as long as it was four point, uh, four parts. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and a cappella, then you, you can sing that in contest and you likely will get a one, right? But, but the, outside of the realm of that, there, there is a lot more accepted today in the contest stage than there was 10 years ago. For example, 10 years ago, even, frankly, even three years ago, uh, there was something written in the, the CNJ manual that said, thou shalt not sing these chords. In fact, what it said is, thou shalt sing these chords. And it had a list of about 12 to 15 chords that comprised the barbershop style. And it said, any other chords are verboten, at least intentional. And one of the things we talk about is we'd hear a chord and we'd say, did they mean to do that or uh, perhaps for the baritones out to lunch? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have the, the, those kind of conversations, and, and, and it's pretty clear, right, in certain chords that, that were used for, for color, um, they start to creep in about, oh, let's say 10 years ago. And we're hearing them more and more now, and, and we actually had a long discussion at Category School about how do we feel about these chords. And the bottom line is that you can sing just about anything you want in contest. Just understand that that list of chords that we used to call these are our chords, those still apply. You can use others in rare cases, judiciously. But they're like a really, really strong spice. If you use too much ghost pepper in the dish, it's going to completely overpower the dish. Right, so you just got to be careful with some of those spicy chords. But if, you're, if you can stomach them, you can use them. And we're willing to accept them as long as they're appropriate. So what you're telling me is there is no such thing as a contestable barbershop song, or a non-contestable barbershop song. There are. There, there are certainly some songs that, that we, we say, do these fit well? So actually, let me play a couple of examples here. We're going to listen to a couple different examples. Tell me which one fits better for contest. And these are limited embellishments. What's that? These are limited embellishments. I saw a lot of people stopping and talking on the stage upstairs. There, there is, there's no, there, there's, again, it's, it, it's unity and contrast and satisfying proportions. You can go too far. You can go too far with things like uh, uh, over embellished. You can go too far with use of certain chords. You can go uh, uh, too far with, with uh, chord choices that don't give you the circle movement and the dominant sevens. And they're just going to be weaker vehicles. They're, the, the, your score is going to be lower because of the vehicle. But let's listen to these. Tell me which one of these is, a, is the better example of the style. Tell me that I was 
Somebody. Do, 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 do. They used to tell me I was building a dream. That's all I Second one is bass melody, right? What else? It's, uh, more, homophonic. more homophonic, right? The first one was more homophonic. I certainly heard that the, the uh, second one was more was bass melody, but it was inside. It was, wasn't the top. <laughs> it it wasn't the top. top. Ah, melody needs to be an inside voice. Inside as opposed to inside the top. Correct. Yeah, right. Inside, harmony on the top and the bottom. Thank you. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Now. So, 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 I, I, don't, I don't care about the You can just explain that a bit more. Sure. Uh, the melody in a barbershop song, and, mm -hmm. and, and something that we particularly consider contestable in the style, needs to have harmony above it and below it. Oh, okay. yeah. That's what I mean by inside. So we've got four right. voices. Melody has to be one of those. The baritone yeah. can be above or below the melody. And in fact, the baritone is oftentimes just the anti-lead. Yeah. The, yeah. the, bar the baritone dodges the lead. Lead goes high, Barry goes low. Yeah. Right? Big problem. Right? Yeah, the lead doesn't go outside either of those. The lead stays inside most times. When the lead does go outside, it's typically real close voice with the tenor, yeah. right? Uh, right next to it. So close that they're rubbing into each other. That if you were in Joe's class, last class, he talked about that major second interval. We hear a lot of that, so the melody will pop out, but it just won't stay there for a long time. So that means, effectively, where the pitch is, a baritone range can be the melody throughout the song. And it would be contestable. Yes. It's so just that we happen to make the lead sing. So is, isn't an example, um, Music Man Sincere is a baritone melody, isn't it? The whole way through. Yeah. Mind memory. Yeah. Uh, uh, so a, a baritone, right, a baritone voice could sing, the, could sing the melody as long as the voicing stayed inside, had harmony above and below it, and we'd be fine with that, either baritone or lead. It doesn't matter who's singing the part, you know, as long as it's an inside voice. And, and oftentimes, oftentimes the, the ranges are similar, particularly in our arrangements today. Uh, it used to be that we tend to think of leads having a little higher range than the baritones, because most of the most of the arrangements had the baritone below the lead, and we had a lot of those kind of tight voices. That doesn't apply anymore either. In fact, in many charts we see the baritone singing more tenor range, and the tenor singing an octave above where the baritones used to sing, just to create more fire and excitement. Are there are many leads who will accept that. <laughs> are the leads who uh, are the leads who accept uh, actually singing the baritone part? Or <laughs> uh, well, having the baritone, having the melody the whole way through. Uh, uh, not many that I know. <laughs> <laughs> so why aren't there more songs written in the I guess musical theatre baritone range, like a Joubert or something like that? They're, they're normally in the, the musical theatre tenor range. Yeah, that's a great question um, because typically. Uh, what we find is for the musical theater baritones, um, that's going uh, that's going to drive harmony with the the melody the, the, the baritone part above the, the melody yeah. most often, right. um, and and typically the lower voice stuff for that baritone is it's going to be difficult to create chords that lock and ring because uh, you, you, unless you've got uh, you know, and, and we heard some basses here this week. Yeah, that you know, you've you got to have, have an uber bass that can handle that. Interesting. Okay. Let me play another example here. Here's, here's another, uh, two different songs. Tell me which one uh, is more contestable. <coughs>
test stage? Uh, uh, why? Tenor melody, right? Uh, did it have the kind of embellishments in chords that we hear in our charts? Yeah. Yeah. Some, right? There are certainly some some chords and some embellishments that are more, uh, you know, more pop or jazz oriented. But tenor melody is the primary thing. Let's just do another version. Barbershop from songs that we never thought of as barbershopable before. 